Hi everyone, welcome back to Steve's Garage. In today's video, I'm going to be assembling a woman's Schwinn Admiral bicycle. This was shipped right to the house. You couldn't buy it in a store, and so you have to put it together yourself. Before we jump in, I want to cover the tools that I use to get this done. Please keep in mind that sometimes sizes can change, so if you don't have something that I listed, double check that it's the right size before you go out and buy a new tool. So here's everything that I use to put the bike together. Ratchet and extension, something to cut zip ties with, 10 and 14 mil wrenches along with 10 and 14 mil sockets. I have a six and five millimeter Allen driver. You can use keys, drivers, whatever you've got will work. I have assorted screwdrivers, flat and Phillips head, a knife, some chain lube of your choice. And lastly, not pictured is a bike pump. My tires did not come inflated. And so you'll wanna have a bike pump to make sure that yours are properly inflated. Everything inside the box is zip tied together so it doesn't move around, which is why I suggest using pliers to cut the zip ties instead of a knife. You can overshoot it with the knife and then maybe nick the bike or something like that. It's just much more controlled to use the pliers. So just keep cutting zip ties and pulling parts out until the box is empty and then we can get to putting it together. Once it's out of the box, there's still a bunch more stuff to pull off. You have all this paper and wrapping and stuff, so keep pulling it off. Just a side note that I want to mention, I know that I'm working on a bike stand. You do not need one to assemble a bike. If I didn't have one, I would have unfolded the cardboard and placed the bike on that. It should balance on the rear tire and the front fork while you're assembling everything else. The order in which you assemble a bicycle doesn't really matter. I mean, obviously some parts have to go on before other stuff, but I'm going to start with the handlebars today. If you want to do that, go ahead. If not, I guess you can jump around. First things first, make sure your fork is facing the right way. You see a lot of bikes put together with the fork facing backwards. In this case, it's easy to tell because the brakes are already installed, and so the brakes should be on the front of the fork, not the back of the fork. Moving on, there's a protective cap on the bottom of the stem. You're going to want to take that off. I had to loosen the quill stem. That's where the 6mm Allen comes in. It wouldn't just slide into the head tube, but once you loosen that stem up, it should slide into the head tube, and then you can tighten it up. This mark here is the minimum insertion height. Generally speaking, if you have a taller rider, the stem is higher. If you have a shorter rider, the stem is lower, but it can only go so high. It has to be in the head tube a certain amount, and that's what this mark is for. As far as what height to tighten this down at, just pick a spot and go with it. It's all up to the rider. They're gonna have to ride the bike, find out what's comfortable, and adjust from there. As you're tightening the stem down, make sure that your handlebars and the fork are aligned to each other. I'm sure we've all crashed a bike and you grab the fork and the handlebars and yank it back into place. That's essentially what you're doing here. You just want to make sure you're holding them in place as you're tightening that stem down. Up next is another 6mm Allen bolt to adjust the handlebars. With these style handlebars, I typically start with the grips about horizontal or maybe a little bit tipped towards you because that can be a bit more ergonomic. But handlebars are again very much a rider thing and you'll want to get the person on the bike riding and find out what's comfortable for them. While you're up here, you can tighten down your reflector or take it off. It's up to you. I'm leaving it on because this isn't my bike. Personally, if you're going to be riding around cars and a place where you need to be seen, get a nice headlight, get a nice tail light. These reflectors don't do anything. The next item I'm installing is the seat. It came with the seat post folded down and tightened, so I had to loosen that up to get that angle correct. Slide the seat post down to the seat tube and you can tighten everything up. Just like the handlebar height and angle, the seat height and angle are very rider dependent, so pick a general position to install it and then let the rider adjust it from there. My suggestion for the initial seat angle is tipped slightly down. If it's too far down, you're going to feel like you want to fall off the seat, but if it's too far up, it's uncomfortable to ride. So find that horizontal spot, either leave it there or slightly downward, and then let the rider adjust. Next up for me is the front wheel. It comes with a quick release skewer, but you have to install it into the hub. So just remove this little end nut, slide it in, put the nut back on, and then you can put it up into the fork. The tires are big enough on this bike that they're not going to clear the brakes when you go to slide the wheel up into the fork, so you have to release the brakes. You can squeeze the calipers together, and then there's a little cable stay that you release, and the calipers will come apart, and you have all the clearance you need. Once the wheel is installed, you should be able to just reinstall that little cable stay, and your brakes are good to go. In my case, they were a little too tight, and so I couldn't do that. No matter what I tried, I couldn't get enough clearance to get the cable back into the stay on the caliper. I tried the barrel adjuster up at the brake handle. I tried just loosening the cable and adjusting it that way just a little bit. I just couldn't get the clearance, so I ended up having to release the cable entirely, assemble it back together, and then tighten that cable down where it needs to be. Hopefully you don't have to go through this. I'm not really covering it here in detail because it shouldn't be a problem, but I'm also not surprised it was because these bikes are assembled pretty quickly at the factory. Now for the pedals. Remember that your left side pedal is reverse thread, so it's lefty-tighty, righty-loosey. 
and then the right side is righty tighty lefty loosey. One great thing about these pedals is that they don't require a pedal wrench. Sometimes the clearance between the arm and the pedal itself is so tight that you need a specific thin pedal wrench. You won't need that in this case, a standard wrench will do. The fenders may be optional, but this bike came with them, so I am going to cover installation. The rear came already installed, so I'm only going to cover the front here. If your rear didn't come installed, leave a comment, I can probably walk you through it. It's very similar to the front, so this should help you out if you need to install that rear fender. Additionally, I do have one brake adjustment comment I talk about at the end, so if you don't have fenders, just skip to that next chapter, don't end the video yet. It does come with all the hardware, which is great. Make sure you put a washer on either side of the fork, slide your bolt, tighten your nut down, but don't tighten it all the way. You want to leave a little bit of adjustment for when you're going to bolt those little arms to the bottom of the fork. Right behind where the wheel bolts up on the bottom of the fork, there are two little bolts that you have to remove, and that's where those fender stays go. I didn't expect them to be so tight, which is why you see me struggling a little bit here. I expected them to be like finger tight and I could just undo them, but I did need the wrench and you kind of got to wind them out all the way with that. So once you take them out, bolt those little stays up, tighten it down, and once you've tightened those down, go back up top and tighten that bolt at the top of the fork. From what I remember, there is a little bit of adjustment there, so make sure your fender is centered on your wheel and tire and not interfering with your brake or anything like that. You should be able to get it to sit real nice. Everything on the rear of the bike came assembled, but I did have to adjust these little tension screws to center the caliper on the rim itself. After you'd use it, the brake was dragging, so I had to do that on the front and the rear. Not a huge deal, just keep it in mind that if your brakes are dragging, this is how to adjust it. Now that the assembly is complete, I highly suggest that you use some type of chain lube before you get out there and ride the bike. To sum it up quickly, a dry lube is best for dry conditions, a wet lube is best for wet conditions. So unless you're riding this bike in the rain and the snow, Go ahead and get yourself a good dry lubricant. I like Bowshield T9. You can use whatever you want. A dry lubricant is going to repel things like dirt and grit. A wet lubricant is going to attract those things. So don't use a wet lubricant if you're just riding this bike around in the summertime, cruising around. It's only going to do you more harm than getting a good dry lubricant. And with that, your bike is ready for a test ride. I'm not going to say it's all good because it probably isn't. Hopefully it is, but you probably need to adjust the seat handlebars, maybe even the brakes and the derailleur. It's going to need an adjustment after your initial ride, and once the bike breaks in a little bit, you'll probably have to adjust it again. I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you get out there and ride. Please think about liking, subscribing, and share it with your friends if they bought the same bike and need to learn how to assemble it. Remember that the best bike is the bike that you own, so get out there and ride, enjoy it, and above all else, be safe. Thanks everybody.